The Earth is a pretty amazing place. It's a random planet in a random solar system, in a random part of a random galaxy, and somehow it wound up having the perfect conditions to support life. Water, a breathable atmosphere, and a climate that is not too hot, not too cold, but just right. In the interstellar climate lottery, it seems that we hit the Goldilocks jackpot. But that isn't to say our climate has been this way forever or will continue to stay this way. The Earth has undergone many changes to its climate in its 4.5 billion year existence. Scientists estimate that it has undergone no fewer than five distinct ice ages during that time, and we're officially in one now that started 2.6 million years ago, alternating between glaciers very slowly advancing over 100,000 year glacial periods and very slowly retreating over 10 to 15,000 year interglacial periods. In the past 250 years, we've seen increasing changes to our climate, due in part to global greenhouse gas emissions, specifically CO2 and methane, that trap the sun's heat in our atmosphere like the glass in a greenhouse does. What changed? Well, to name a few things we now probably couldn't do without, the Industrial Revolution, invention of the automobile, widespread agriculture, turning kerosene into jet fuel, and developing methods to generate electricity from fossil fuels and hydroelectric dams. In fact, in the last 100 years alone, the globe's average surface temperature has risen about 1 degree Celsius, with the rate of that change nearly doubling in the last 50 years. And while this warming of our planet may not sound like a bad thing when we're out shoveling snow in minus 30, the reality is that when it happens too fast, it's a big problem. And while we are making great strides in becoming more efficient and finding ways to achieve everything we need to with fewer emissions, the challenge is that our world's demand for everything that requires energy is growing at a pace that's currently faster than our ability to produce it with sources that have lower or no greenhouse gas emissions. For the time being, we will still need to use all forms of energy to meet the world's demands, while also making the changes necessary to get our emissions in check. In Canada, we're doing a lot to ensure that we produce our energy as efficiently and responsibly as possible, while also investing heavily in technological innovation, renewables, and ways to help other countries make positive changes themselves. Because it's not like we all live in separate little bubble worlds where what other bubble people do or don't do doesn't matter. We share the same atmosphere, so what happens on one side of the world affects the other side. For example, in China, Coal is still the predominant source of energy to produce electricity. And while they have recently built some of the largest solar farms in the world, that alone simply can't keep up with their existing demands, never mind the expected increase. And because of coal's low cost and ample availability, it unfortunately creates a bit of a dependency on it until they can get other energy sources in place and at the scale required. That said, China is replacing some of their planned coal power plants with natural gas which emits roughly half the emissions of coal. And we're doing that back here at home, too. In 2016, Canada committed to phase out traditional coal-fired electricity completely by 2030. Replacing a higher carbon energy source like coal with a lower carbon source like natural gas is sometimes referred to as stepping down the carbon ladder. Why is that? Because we choose to use an energy source on a lower rung of carbon emissions, meaning its production and consumption releases fewer of the carbon-based emissions that have a negative impact on climate change. Beyond the implementation of more renewable energy sources like solar and wind, new innovations are helping us to move all sources lower down the ladder. Innovations like improving the efficiency of fossil fuel production and refinement, carbon capture and storage, and using industrial CO2 emissions to grow algae for nutritional supplements. Yum. In my tum. These all play a part in reducing our country's own greenhouse gas emissions. But it can't just be one country alone, since, remember, we all live within the same bubble. An ongoing global effort will be critical, as the world's population and energy demands continue to increase over the coming decades. Nations can lead and commit to larger initiatives, but individually, we can all help make a difference by being more efficient with our own energy use and reduce our consumption of stuff. Human activity contributes to current climate issues. But human action can be the solution.